conditioning and how the dogs all salivated at the sound of the bell. Yeah, so that's a classically conditioned response. And you set it up by just doing that, by pairing those two things. Okay? Now, how does that help your dog? Well, it helps your dog because once they understand that the click means a treat's coming, they pay real close attention to what the heck they were doing when they heard that sound. So I always focus on that to try to make training fun. And that doesn't matter, it doesn't matter to me whether we're training sit, down, stay, or we're training look away from that dog because you are going to bark and lunge, right? But once I build in that classically conditioned response to being able to pass that dog on the walk, all of a sudden seeing dogs don't make me want to bark and lunge anymore as a dog. I get really excited and look at mom. So it's a completely different approach to maybe some, than to, to training than maybe you've heard before. Um, and maybe it isn't, but I hope to clarify some things for you tonight so that you can utilize some of these methods um, in your own household. It does work with um, husbands too, but <laughs> the treats are different. <laughs> What's really interesting about dogs is they don't come knowing English. Um, and dogs read our body language um, much more than they understand our human language. And so that's where a clicker can help also, too, is because it's not fair to a dog to say, <laughs> sit, 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 because you might as well be saying, watermelon, 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 watermelon. They don't know what they dog that this means sit before I even teach them the word sit. I don't even say the word sit until I can get the behavior and teach a hand signal because dogs read each other's bodies and our bodies so much better. Here's a calming signal uh, sheet that just lets you know, and maybe you've seen your dog do some of these things, but um, dogs are always communicating with us whether we understand what they're saying or not, and they're always trying to communicate with other dogs too. And sometimes dogs are just doing these things to calm themselves down. Dogs greet other dogs, they'll first come up to their muzzle They'll first go muzzle, muzzle, and then they'll go around. And then I always count the seconds because if a dog doesn't like another dog, and see, I think, I think they go up to the muzzle first and they say something about their mama. And then they go around because have you ever noticed how they'll get up? Dogs that they look like they're going to be okay in the beginning, and they get up, yeah. <laughs> posture a little bit, and then they go, <laughs> you know, whatever. And I, I think they're saying things about each other's mother. I really do. So, um, and, uh, and, and that, but that's it. You don't know who's going to get them, mm -hmm. and then they're going to most likely crate them. I would have the mindset that every dog is going to be crated. That way, if you're setting them up to be crated, they're going to be successful. And I like that. And then refreeze it. So now you've got a layer. You've got a layer of the whatever I said on top, mm -hmm. and then inside. And that's a good 20 minutes for most dogs to lick through and get it out and enjoy it. So, um, handouts in there. I don't care if it's a puppy or a new dog in your home, they should be taken out as much as possible when you first get them and don't give them a lot of freedom quickly. That's the biggest mistake people make. But they, they have to learn to hold it. They don't even know, their little bladders don't know they can hold it. <laughs> so that's where um, using a proper sized crate um, can really help because dogs don't like to go they don't like to go. I'm not saying they will never go. They don't like to go where they sleep. But if you leave any dog in there long enough, it's going to go wherever. The front clip harnesses are better than just having the full pressure on your dog's neck. Because I know Dr. Uh, Gregory can tell you um, dogs can suffer from clap collapsed tracheas. Mm -hmm. From pulling on that neck, it doesn't happen right away usually, but over a period of, you know, pulling. One of the reasons I do like this harness is because it, it clips in the front. But it also has a second clip back here so that you have a lot of control. So that you almost have, you have the dog back here, so they can't, they can't really, you can't, there's no twisting and flipping happening. You know what I mean? If you, but do you see, I don't know if you can see, this is a much smaller clip than this, and it's also much lighter. This is minuscule in weight compared to this one. This was made to use on the gentle leader or the halty because it's so lightweight. Because when this is attached, it shouldn't pull at all. It shouldn't feel like a correction to your dog. So that the slightest little movement of this, I mean slight, your dog can feel it. That's one of the reasons I like it. But people misuse these too, and that's one of the reasons I don't like it. 
because I'll see people jerking them around and when their dog won't sit, jerk it up on them. And I mean, my God, this can be as bad as anything else if it's used improperly, okay? So um, any questions about these? Here's my issue with the prong collar. Dog pulls for whatever reason, okay? When it sees whatever it wants, it also has pain associated with it. So now the classical conditioning that's happening is when I see that, it hurts. And the more I pull, the more it hurts. Therefore, that equals something not good. And I may pull more to get to it in the future because now I have a negative association with it. Not saying always, forever, and ever, amen, but it darn sure leads to a lot more problems than it helps in the long run because of that. We can't get away from the science. The classically associated stuff is classically associated whether you want it to happen or you stop them from pulling. Oh, I love that you asked that question. <laughs> a combination of the correct tools and training. So I would say three things, management, um, exercise, and providing proper chew toys. And then teaching the dog to chew them. So, and that can happen through the crate when you give in the crate the calm, and you give in the crate the bully stick, and you give in the crate the deer antler or whatever else um, that you're, then you're saying to the dog, this is an appropriate chew toy. Chew it and enjoy it. Um, but thank you for the hard work that you do, and um, I know that you make a difference in dogs' lives, and I'm glad to have stood before you tonight, and if I shed anything, any kind of light or any kind of help in your situation or for you, then I feel like I did my due justice tonight, so thank you. Thank you. For more information on booking Lisa Matthews or Positive Practice Training, call 404-353-2416.